Hans uh, Floyd from Regional College of Service, mm -hmm. uh, George. So, um, yeah, the education process is going to be the process. Uh, so, I'm going to start with put a couple of things in place. Start streamlining the process. Uh, for the simple reason is that, um, uh, for the simple reason that um, we need to verify firstly the family, the net families to the actual um, a, a body or a WC number in our case. Um, so what we've put in place um, is that we will, um, as soon as any information is available or any pictures or what and so forth, so we'll, we'll start at the beginning, right? So we take pictures on scene of the actual victim. Then we will uh, take uh, the body back to our facility where further pictures will be taken. Once uh, we have uh, started the post-mortem process, uh, we will take more of pictures in terms of the clothing, any identifiable marks like tattoos, scars that family members might know of, and those type of things. And we'll, after each case, we will compile a photo album of a, 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 a deceased person. That photo album will then be brought uh, back to the, the hall where the family members are all waiting and then we will then go through a process we will try and eliminate um, the family members and also then once uh, there's a possibility that a family member is then uh, linked to that specific body or that specific WC number we will then uh, put in immediate contact with the police um, and the detective branch they will then assist us in the family to, to for the authority service where we will start a formal process. If the bodies are visually identifiable, we will go the visual route. Obviously, that will assist us uh, to get the body identified quicker. But if not, then we'll have to go the scientific route, uh, it's either by means of fingerprints uh, or DNA. So um, right now, to, to the bodies that are being recovered, they are in a state of decomposition. Right. So that makes uh, the visual identification a little bit more tricky and a little bit more difficult but um, we and normally we would not show any pictures to any families of any bodies in a state of decomposition but because of the situation we find ourselves in um, we have to sensitize the family members to, to the fact that uh, the pictures might be gory but also it, is, it will assist us to obviously link a family because even though a body is slightly visually identifiable we still have to go the DNA route or the fingerprint route, the scientific route to get them formally uh, identified and, and then before we can hand over to the, the, the bodies of back to the families. The issue is that uh, we have uh, made certain consensus and we are speeding things up as fast as, as we can but at this stage we also just ask for a little bit of patience uh, so to allow us to do our process we obviously working overtime we do extra shifts we, we uh, as the bodies come in we will uh, go through the post-mortem process and we get the pictures done and so forth so um, i understand that the families they want closure they want answers but if they can give us a day or two of, after a day at least after the body's been recovered so that we can put those photo albums uh, available because that will assist us once we have everything together, we put them, um, bring it back to the wall, and so we can work through the families and start linking families to the, to the bodies and then um, obviously get them identified as, as soon as possible. So for those bodies that are not, that, are, that, that doesn't have any clear identification or any markings that one could really trace and you have to do DNA, um, you talked about expediting the, the, the situation, um, the, the whole process. How are you going to do that? Okay, so we've, we've got certain assurances from, from the, those. Look, this is a value chain. It's not just us. It's a whole bunch of uh, uh, departments and uh, that's coming together so that we can expedite this as quick and as soon as possible. So uh, we have uh, people right now at our facility from uh, the victim identification, SAPC uh, victim identification unit. We have people um, all over coming to assist. So as soon as we get any type of information, any type of, of DNA, we will, we will we'll take it. We will try and match it as soon as possible. Uh, the thing is we, also when it comes to DNA, we need, there are certain parameters to be able to match a, a person to a family member. And uh, if, they, if they do not have any immediate family members in George, that's going to make things slightly more difficult for us in terms of matching a body with, with DNA. Uh, we've also, uh, there's the, all the 
consulates are around, they are making information available. So we, like I said, we're a multidisciplinary team trying to get everybody identified and back to the family members as soon as possible. Do you basically give priority to um, the victims at this site? Okay. Um, we are working as hard as we can, but we also have other uh, cases come in normal time. So right now we're doing as many of the this disaster, but we also have other cases that's that's, that's why I say so we're doing things in shift so that obviously the people that are also affected outside of this uh, disaster are also being served. Can we ask at this stage how many um, of the that have recovered from the disaster so far and how many are identified and whether their families have already been um, informed about, about okay. that? Okay, so we have one formal identification that's done, the whole process has been done so the family, can, that body can actually be, be released to the family. And then we have a number of bodies that's already linked to certain family members. So the actual uh, physical um, identification process where it becomes formal, those still need to be done. But that's little things like paperwork, ID documents, those type of things that's, that's needed for us to be able to do the identification. And as soon as that's done, then we can release those, those bodies to the family.